Okay, we're doing inference from the frequentist perspective, one that will be dominant in our discussions, pretty dominant in political science, um, been changing maybe the last 15 to 20 years, more and more people are embracing the Bayesian point of view, which will be the subject of a subsequent video. Um, mad at me because you have to write this down. <laughs> and you shouldn't be. This is all very, very easy. Frequentist, objectivist, inference and probability. Back to the probability primer, the just idea of flipping a coin. Over and over and over again, the, the probability of an event, A, we talked about. The, in the frequentist perspective, probability as a concept attaches to the coin in the coin toss example the probability of the coin toss, the probability conceptually attaches to the, to the coin and that turns out to be completely different in the Bayesian point of view, but because it doesn't attach in any way, shape, or form to the researcher, we call the frequentist perspective also objectivist. It's an objective perspective on really on what probability actually is. And this is, again, again, the dominant view of inference, even though, um, as you'll see, there's some clumsiness along the way. First thing I want to do is explain what's on the board, some old terms, some new terms. I have notation issues that I, I want you to gain some familiarity with here. X bar we've seen. These are sample versions of population parameters. So X bar is the sample mean capital mu sub x is the population mean of x. s squared sub x is the variance, the um, sample variance of x. And these things that look like sixes are just poor penmanship or craftsmanship on the board by me. Um, these are sigmas, capital uh, letter sigma, lower, lowercase sigma. Uh, squared, that's the population variance population standard deviation, and here p hat we use to describe a sample proportion. We're going to derive one of those in a new video, and I'm um, actually right here, and population proportion p. And we're going to work hypothetically this example that illustrates really at the end the most powerful theorem in all of statistics. We're going to work hypothetically with our little sample of 10 to begin with. And assume that the population is 13,000. I think that's about how many people are on campus at Ole Miss. 13, um, not people, but students. And so we'll assume we have a random sample. This is absolutely central. Uh, we'll assume that we have a random sample of 10 students and test scores here. You've seen all these before. Test scores that um, we just happen by random to have students whose name all begins with J. And we have a random collection of, of test scores on a test that every student on the campus had to take. This is all hypothetical, just to illustrate. So we have, there are 13,000 test scores out there. We have 10, and this is critical. Our 10 were drawn at random uh, from population. Going back to the, little, the sections on survey research, talked about simple random sample and more complex sampling schemes. For our purposes here, we're going to assume a simple random sample. That is, our 10 John, Jane, Joes, Jills, and so forth, they arrived on the chalkboard via a random draw um, out, of, out of the pool of 13,000 students. Now, got two variables we're going to examine. One I've labeled X sub i, that's the test score. One I've labeled D sub i, we're going to assume that's vote choice. Let's say it's from 2012, say all of the data are from 2012, we have vote choice scored zero for students who indicated that they voted for Obama and scored as a one for students who indicated uh, that they voted for Mitt Romney in the 2012 election campaign. That's all of it. Frequentist perspective on inference is about, we, people use that term Rather than Bayes is, Bayesian is named after a, a fellow person. Um, 
the frequentist perspective is named after the sort of foundational element, getting started, we're talking about relative frequency counts on a variable. Relative frequency counts on a variable, and we're going to talk about relative frequency counts on a variable in the long run across repeated sampling. But let's get started first with a very fundamental notion, a mathematical expectation. When I said the word mathematical, some of you cringed. This is extraordinarily easy. Can it for a moment with any math anxiety and follow through with me as I illustrate something quite important. The first variable I'm going to work with is this one, the xi. So it's the test scores. And define the expected value of the test score in our sample only. Forget the population for a moment, we're headed there. In our sample only, define it as the sum of the relative frequencies of each score on the variable. So there, are, n is equal to 10. There are 10 j named people over there. And so what I'm do, going to do and when I take a mathematical expectation is physically, what, would, what, what you would do is weight each value that you observe, weight each value um, by the relative frequency of its appearance in the data set. This problem is set up to be remarkably easy. If you had a really large and crazy number for n, 931, <coughs> then you'd be doing so. Um, I, I, I have a relative frequency here. Only 71 repeats itself. I could have set this up so that I weight 71 more heavily. Uh, instead, I've set it up so that I weight each one by by n. So actually I weight each one by 1 over n, which is the same as dividing. So look what I'm doing here is I'm going to take 71 and divide by 10. So it's going to be 7.1. 91 becomes 9.1. 72 becomes 7.2. Encourage you to work this out all the way. So just moving a decimal point. Easy math because I've chosen nice round numbers. And this simply is 77.5 as opposed to 77. That is, if you take each number in the vector column and you divide it by the total n, which is 10, uh, and you add up all those, all those new numbers, you're going to get 77.5. You've already seen 77.5 with respect to this problem. It is x bar. So, we say the expected value of a variable is its mean. In this case, a sample, uh, a sample mean. The expected value of xi is equal to the sample mean. So we're talking about the frequency of occurrence in a random draw into the 10 data point pool. And the expected value does have this mathematical, this is arithmetic. It has an arithmetic meaning here. Um, but it also has a conceptual one relative to the random selection idea. So the question is, what would we expect to get if we just drew, drew one here from random one? And the, the, the answer is you expect to get something around about the mean. Uh, and in mathematical terms, this is an exact relationship. Now, nothing going on here in the next thing except a restatement of what's prior using data that are not these are ratio level data and these are absolute um, in a sense absolute level there's a this is a dichotomous variable the binary variable has wonderful little properties as we'll see going forward and it's the vote indicator and the expected value of vote is the same so you weight each um, occurrence. This was easier to do. I didn't have to put the dot 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 in here uh, because you were weighting these by by the frequency with which they occur across the ten, right? So half of them are zeros and half of them are ones. And so uh, one one half of zero is zero, uh, and one half of one is 0.5. So the estimate here for p hat, the pop the pr sample proportion, the estimate for p hat is 0.5. Easy, easy, easy stuff. Right? Going to get a little harder. Not a little harder. We're going to um, sort of shift up a level. And 
rather than, I'm going to do some erasing and replacing, so that I'm not going to have to erase the entire thing and then start over. Rather than you do that, I hope that you would write what I'm about to write again. So, we're going to move from thinking now about data observed at the level of the individual, Jack, Jess, Jim, Jan, and Jax, to thinking about allowing the sample mean to be calculated over and over and over again and recorded over and over and over again and treating the different sample means that we get whenever we go in and we draw 10 at random from the whole pool of 13,000. We're going to treat x bars as data points. So we're going to have not an x. We're going to now wonder about the expectation of x bar uh, when that's a random draw um, of 10 from the 13,000, and this is a random draw of 10 from the 13,000, and finally, instead of the small n, I'm going to put the large n here, put the large n in there, and it's going to take 13,000 samples of 10 with replacement, that is I'm going to rip out 10, find a sample mean, record the sample mean, the first one, throw the 10 back into the 13,000 pool, take another random sample of 10, you won't get the same people, and I'm going to do that uh, 13,000 times, so in between here it's going to be hard, hard to show there. I'm going to do that 13,000 times, and at the end of the day, what I'm going to have is a population mean works exactly the same way. We have 13,000 uh, samples. Give me 13,000 X bars. I just am weighting each one of them by the size of the population. And at the end, I'm going to get the mean of the, pop the, mean of the population. The, what we call the population uh, parameter. I'm going to move him for now. We're come, going to come back to proportions. <clears throat> so now we've got this. The expected value of a sample mean is equal to its the population mean, the one that you sought, the one that you sought to estimate. This um, is a property of something we're going to refer to as an estimator. So we're going to think of three words here. Estimate, estimation, estimator. These are the terms that the frequentists use to describe the process of making inferences from sample to, to populations. An estimate is an X bar. An X bar is an estimate. Um, so 77.5 is an estimate using a sample of supposedly random data. Um, to make an estimate about what the population mean actually is. Estimates are by definition estimates. They're not, uh, they're not correct. They're just, they're just your best guess. The process of generating estimates, obviously, is called estimation. And these terms aren't really prevalent at all in Bayesian um, statistics, but they're fundamental to understanding the frequentist perspective, which is about was the estimation process that is, is going to assume that there are many, 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 many samples drawn when in fact you only have one. Last, an estimator is the formula. I should be writing this down. Estimator is the formula that you use to craft an estimate of a population parameter. In our case, with the sample mean, which is all that's left on the board, uh, the estimator is is the sum of the xi divided by small n. Uh, the estimator is add them up and divide by the total. 
it has, uh, I might show it in an extra video, um, has more complicated uh, sort of derivation, but it, to add them up and divide by the total is an estimator. And frequent statistics, part of the process of estimation and producing an estimate. Our estimate of mu x, we don't know what it is, our estimate of it with 10 observations in one sample um, is, is 77.5. So, frequentist inference two coming up.